Right, hello ladies and gentlemen. So, welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is a busy, busy week for me. Now, if you're watching um, the Tuesday video, the Wednesday video, and this is now the Thursday video, um, you're going to notice that I've done them all together. Well, the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday one, I've done them all together. And the simple reason being is because when I took on this little challenge that I was doing to myself, and this little sort of like... A giveaway thing that you will have to check out the Spencer Arms uh, Instagram page for. I didn't realise that I got a lot on this week, <laughs> and like, and uh, so I've got to sort of like compact it all in to get it all done to get the YouTube videos out to get everybody to so they can get this little four-digit pin that they need that are hidden in these videos, and also um, so I can get everything finished and sorted by the weekend. Follow my Instagram um, page, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's all for the love of the beer loving and pub shed community. Basically, everybody that follows Ale and Audio, all the YouTubers out there that, that, that I follow and everything, and anybody out there in the UK that just loves beer and cheer. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do the last review that's coming out on Thursday, and I'm going to do it big. This has been sat in my fridge for a while. I've had the whole range. I don't think I brought them all to the channel, but this one... I'm going to do as the finale and I can't even believe that a beer as unique and quite frank as expensive as this some part of this is going to end up in my drip tray for the bloody forfeit that I've done to myself so if you're a follower of the Spencer Arms YouTube channel you're going to think what's he going on about all these like encrypted little bits and bobs he's talking about this drip tray stuff and everything else well you you're going to have to just head over to my page on Instagram and watch the last two videos and you'll sort of find out. And listen to Ellen Audio, the latest episode that came out on Friday the 13th. And um, and if you listen all the way through that, you can listen to it on Spotify, Apple, loads of different places, Mixcloud. Uh, it's, I'm always sharing it on uh, Instagram and talking about it here on YouTube. You'll understand why I am putting bits of these beers in the drip tray. Anyway, it's all for fun. Look at this bad boy. So this is the collaboration, the Ch the Chubbles and uh, the Vale Brewery. This is the uh, number three, I think it is, Chubbles 3 Enhanced. Uh, okay, so I'll bring you some information about this in a minute, about what's in this and everything else after I've poured. Oh, yes, poured this out. This is coming in at 10%. By volume now when I've drank this I've got to go back up the house and try and edit the first video that I've done but you know what I just fancied after having two New Zealand IPAs I just fancied a nice big beer again if you watch the last video look at the beautifulness of them fine carbonation bubbles flying up this can there is only going to be the slightest, tiniest little bit of a thimble going in my drip tray of this because this beer is too damn good to start doing silly things like that. And I'm sure the people... I didn't have to do what I'm doing. I chose to do it if I got a question wrong and I got the question wrong and I never backed down on a challenge. Um, well, when I said don't back down on a challenge, I will back down on a challenge if I don't think I can do it. But if I set myself the challenge, I will lie, I will do it. I'm very anal about that, setting myself a goal, and I'll do it. So again, we've got, and when I say again, if you've watched this little series, these four videos that have come out Monday, the 16th, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you'll know what I'm talking about. Look at that. That is a light, orangey, uh, probably pineapple-y coloured uh, be very light, it almost looks like a pina colada in a glass there. Um, very thick. This is thick. Look at it. This thing, you could like come across here with your car. You know, this is on your drive. Someone just put it in your drive um, to talk to the neighbour uh, while they were drinking a beer. And they just oh, put it on the drive. And you come in your car and you bump into it and it just goes, boom. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just so thick. I can feel the weight in it as well. These cans are four 40 milliliter cans. And they, if you've ever noticed, I don't know whether you've ever noticed, but they all weigh differently. 
In theory, four, 440 milliliters worth of liquid should weigh exactly the same. You'd think that, wouldn't you? But they don't, because for me, they definitely weigh different. And to prove it, I think one of these days I will put them on scales. This is so much heavier than the last beer I've had. I can feel it in my arm because of my shoulder injury as well. I've got, I can feel it. It's harder to hold. It's thick. It's bold. It's massive. This is. So here we go. So again, because of that thick, creamy head, there, it's hard to. <coughs> So I am a little bit leery because I've had a couple of fairly, well, one was 6.5%, the other was 56 So I've had two beers already. I'm a little bit leery, excuse me. Um, but ugh, I don't recommend the snorting, um, the, the foamy head on top of a big 10% beer like this. Whew. Wow. This is a triple IPA, I believe. Um, I'm sure it's a triple IPA, not even without looking at it. I'm sure it is. I've got some information in front of me, should I need it here. Um Anyway, just really thick, really thick, resinous, tropical fruity, a bit of wininess there, probably got Nelson in there, this is going to be so resinous, I could just smell the resinous side of this, right, anyway, it's going to be thick, it's going to be oats in this, it's going to be everything in this, right, I've just had two beers, my mouth's watering, right, cheers everybody, cheers. Ooh. Dear God. Oh, my God. And that is what we call a shudder beer. Now, when I say shudder beer, it was one of my mates years ago. And I've mentioned this before, probably 20 videos before. I had a beer years ago that was quite strong. When I drank it, I went... And I shuddered. And he says to me, that's a shudder beer. And when we used to go to the pub that had the shudder beer, be like, what do you want a shudder beer? <laughs> like, get me a shudder beer. He said, maybe shudder. That made me shudder. Jesus Christ. Oh my God, that's massive. Oh, that is massive. And that's florally as well. And it's got... That's definitely florally. Some people might call that soapy, but it's florally. It's more quality than that. There's the beers that give you sort of like that soapiness, and I think Jimbo from Ellen Audio has mentioned about it as well. Uh, there was a, there was a hoppy mentioned. I think Columbus hop. Now I'm not sure. I've not even seen it on my hop wheel here, and I don't think I'm in the right sort of like frame of mind to go searching all the way around it. Um, but the Columbus hop, I think, is a hop that's not really favourable uh, in some people because of what seems to be a floral sort of like soapiness about it. I can't. I'm spinning around here trying to find it. Um, and I bloody well can't. Uh, Columbus is bound to be on here. I will edit this out. Uh, 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 uh. Do you know what? I can't find it on here. Alexa, what's the flavour profile of Columbus hops? She's normally very good. From listium.com. Columbus hops are known for their earthy and spicy tones with a strong bittering quality, ideal for American ales and IPAs. Hmm. Spiciness. It could be the spiciness, yeah. There's not there's Columbus hops are not in here, not at all. But what's in here is I'm sure there's Nelson in there. But I don't know what else. It's just a big, thick, juicy, OT, beautiful mouthfeel, superb mouthfeel, really smooth, soft. 
High resinous flavours in there, and it really does taste 10%. I've had a 6.5% beer tonight from Verdant that uh, I think is on Tuesdays. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, then I've had the um, Friends from Familiar Places at 5.6%. And even the Verdant 6.5%, it's quite high ABV, really, for the average person. It tasted very... Just drinkable, easy peasy. But this, 3.5% more. Oh, yeah, beauty. This, you can tell this is 10%. Not because, not so much because of its um, alcohol sort of like um, flavours or anything. There's none of that. Just because of how big it is. It's a really big beer. It's so full-bodied. It's so massive in its hot profile. I think it's just absolutely impossible with a, a beer of this quality. It's impossible to pick out all them flavours as an individual. This is just a hop smoothie. It is absolutely. If I think if I was watching somebody review this beer now and they were going, they were picking out all these individual flavours. I'd either think that they've researched it, or they're just quoting the hop profile because you can't really pick it out. Like, really, this is my opinion. It just smells danky and fruity and like a big old... You know when you do a smoothie? I don't do fruit smoothies, but if you mashed up and blended up a load of fruit, it'd be a big old thick, thick milkshakey almost. I mean, if you put milk with it, you make it milkshakey. And... It'd be so hard to pick the flavours out. You're just getting a complete and utter danky, overripe fruit smoothie. That's all I can say. There's nothing in there. Grapefruit, maybe. Grapefruit. But I only really quote that. This is a juicy triple IPA. I, I don't even know it's a triple IPA. I've got the information here. I've, I've, I've searched it. I've got the page in front of me. I've not looked at it. It's a triple IPA, and I think the only reason I know that because I know these are triple IPAs. And um, the only reason I'm saying about the grapefruit is I get grapefruit flavours really big on the back of my tongue. If I sometimes I drink a beer and I don't even I don't get nothing on the back of my tongue, but if I get anything on the back of my tongue, it's generally from a grapefruit hit, the bittering hit. If you drink a West Coast IPA, you always get that bitterness at the back of your tongue, um, but I tend to get the grapefruit flavours there, so I can taste a bit of grapefruit in here, but other than that, it's just a big old massive tropical, danky, overripe fruit smoothie with a real load of oats in there, giving it a smoothness, big malts, probably not anything malty as in like any, oh there might be a slab of caramels in there, but that's probably from the last beer. Probably just a nice pale malt in there. Just giving, just banging out the sugars for the alcohol. Right, let's read what it says on here. So, wow, this is big. So here we go. So uh, what we've got here. So it says, Cloudwater and the Vale Brewery Chubble. So that's as far as I got, right? Well, well I've just scrolled down a bit. but So basically, I, I searched it and I got that far. So then I've just scrolled up to that bit. Uh, that bit there. Where you, where you see the description. And this is show, so it's from like, uh, Hogsback, UK. Cloudwater and the Vale Brewery Chubbles Enhanced. This is saying here, look at this. £12.50 a can. Now I know that Crafty Craig, one of my mates, my one of my Instagram friends and a really great beer reviewer, check him out on Instagram. He's not got a YouTube channel, but he's got a brilliant Instagram channel. He, re he reviews beers pretty much daily, and he brings some fantastic beers to his Instagram page, Crafty Craig. Um, he told me about a bottle shop around the corner. It's not so much a bottle shop; it's just more of a, a corner shop. But they've got a massive craft beer fridge, and I got all the chubbles, all four, I think it's four, maybe five, four of them, but I got all of them from there. It, 
it was amazing to buy like five cans of beer or four cans of beer for the for, for 50 quid yeah it's crazy but what price do you put on this quality you know what i mean so anyway that's coming at 12 pound 50 there it says right so tdh tipper so triple dry hopped triple ipa <sighs> wow Mm. This is an absolutely amazing beer. It's an experience. If you was to bring one of your friends round to your pub shed or your house, and you went, do you want a beer? <laughs> and they went, yeah, yeah, what you got? Oh, my God. You know, I've had people come here and say, you got any bud? I'm like, what, you mean Budvar? Budvar? No, bud, Budweiser. Budweiser. That, <laughs> no, I ain't got any of that. Carlin, no, nah. Fost, no, nah, ain't going near that, no, nah, sorry. Um, I could probably pour you a pint of Foster's after I've drank this and give me 20 minutes. But, like, nah. You imagine giving someone one of these beers. You got a beer, mate? Yeah, no worries, yeah. You know, someone that's just used to drinking 4.5%, sort of like a, a bitters or something. There you go, mate. You know, there you go, there you go. They drink it. It probably like change their DNA. You, you know, you you'd probably watch them fall over, and you'd have to sort of like I don't know, take a, you'd, you'd have to like get rid of them because you think, oh my god, they've drank this beer and they fell over. I'm like, what? I don't know. I don't know what to do. It's an accident. Only give him a beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Joking, okay. But for somebody that's not used to this kind of beer, it can be quite a big, big shock the number you're looking for is zero okay right so if anybody just wondered what went on there i'm not going mad there is a point to me quoting that the number zero which ain't exactly a number it's just a zero and it's the last number you need in order to play the game i'm playing on instagram well anyway so chubbles enhanced a collaboration tipper with the veil that is a triple dry hopped and brewed using their proprietary enhancing technique made with a hundred percent English malt, a ton of flaked oats. Well, yes, I can definitely, definitely agree with the flaked oats. Um, a ton of flaked hopes, uh, oats. And hopped intensively with Galaxy. Now the thing is, I didn't get any passion. I'm not getting any passion fruit in that. Um, oh, where's my favourite hop, Galaxy? I should know passion fruit. Oh my god, I should know that off the top of my head. I've had too many beers. Um, peach, yeah, peach, of course. Now, depending how fresh your beer is, with Galaxy hop, you do get the passion fruit, but the peach. You don't really get that. The Galaxy Hop has to settle down for quite a long while. Now, God, honestly, I wouldn't pick Galaxy out in that. I just wouldn't. It's too blended. I'm being honest. The hops are too well blended together. Um, El Dorado. Uh, El Dorado. Apricot. Tropical and citrus. I mean, there's tons of citrus flavors in these beer. They're massively tropical, citrusy. But honestly, no. I mean, apricot, no. I mean, seriously, Ga Galaxy Citrus Nelson, and even with a Nelson. Honestly. I can't pick out a single a, a, a hop as a single flavour in that at all. I can't. And if anybody could, I'd love to know how you do that. Because literally, that is just a blended beer. That is just all them hops blended together to make this danky, overripe, fruit, lovely, beautiful, oat mouthfeel, absolute crazy beer. Now, Verdant have done beers like this, which are massive. This ain't so much a saturation of the hops. This is more of a blended, 
balance of the fruitiness that the hops give you, in my opinion. And based along uh, alongside the oats, it just gives you a very juicy, but it's highly danky. It's just it's just overripe fruit. I can't literally pick out apart from the apart from the little bit of grapefruit I said at the back of the tongue. Literally, I can't pick out the Galaxy Hop. I can't pick out the Nelson Sauvin Hop. Uh, what's the other hop that's in here? Citra, uh, Eldorado. I can't pick them out as an individual. I just can't. I really can't. And normally, Galaxy, massive hop that is, very very forward, very aggressive, easy to spot. Nelson Sauvin. Easy to spot. Citra hop, easy to spot. That just hides amongst all the other hops for me. Um, and yeah, no, not for me. I can't pick any individual hop out. If you gave me this beer and asked me to decide what hop, hops are in there, I'd give up. I'd just say, I ain't got a clue. I just really have not got a clue because it's so well put together. It's so well mashed up, mixed, balanced. Like, it's amazing. So it says, with Galaxy, Citra, Nelson, Eldorado, insanely saturated orange, grapefruit, and yummy tropical fruit. I mean, yeah, yes, I can get, now they've said orange, I can taste the orange, but it's not really forward, like sometimes I get it. With the New Zealand hops, I tend to get loads of orange, I don't know why. Uh, there's, you know, this ain't the New Zealand sort of variety, but but what I mean, it, well, Nelson is, isn't it? I'm sure Nelson is. Um... Where am I? Yeah, Nelson. Yeah, Nelson is New Zealand. Uh, what else is in there? That's New Zealand. That's it. I think that's the only hop that's New Zealand. Uh, Galaxy isn't, is it? No, Galaxy is. Um, oh, where's Galaxy? Australian, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Galaxy is Australian. So you got Australian, New Zealand hops. Um, El Dorado is USA. So you got Australia, New Zealand, USA. And then Citra, where's that for? But there's various of Citras in there. Um, Citra comes in USA as well. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a real sort of like collab. Well, we cause the because is the veil USA? I don't know. <sighs> Tell me off. I don't know. But basically, yeah, that's <laughs> insanely saturated orange grapefruit and yummy tropical fruit. They're just saying yummy tropical fruit. So. Basically, orange, yes, I got the grapefruit at the back. The orange I'm getting now, now they've mentioned it, but it's not as forward as what I normally get, and tropical fruit. Yummy tropical fruit. Well, ask her over there, Alexa, what, I'm not talking to you, sorry darling, to name tropical fruits. There's frigging hundreds of them in them. And there's some variety, I mean, even strawberry now is, is there amongst the tropical fruits if you look for it. So, yeah, so I think I'm right in reviewing this beer in the correct way to say it's just a mashup of fruits. And, of course, it gets a Spano hashtag waffle 10 out of 10. And this is going in my drip tray. Can't believe it. So that is the four beers. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you've been following the Ellen Audio podcast, you'll know what I'm talking about. But this is an introduction to this very expensive series of beers. Um, and also to tell you that my drip tray now has got beer in it that's been sat there since um, Sunday, the 13th, 14th, 15th, or maybe even Saturday, the 14th. And on Sunday coming, I'm going to be drinking that to end what I've been waffling on about. Right, anyway, I'm going back up the house now to uh, edit these videos. I've done them all now, <laughs> so I can just get on with my life. And uh, yeah, and thank you for putting up with me. And if you fast forwarded through this, I don't blame you. Um, so the number you're looking for on this particular video is zero. Okay, so um, right, take care, everybody. And uh, live, laugh, love, and be good, and keep safe. Cheers. Been spent